Welcome, everybody. This is Sean Wilson at Sean Wilson Piano, and you are actually here for a live training. We have a live session, uh, a diminished course, and I'm going to be taking you through several parts and several things on this course. And what I would like to do is I'm actually going to explain the course from beginning to end so you can see exactly what you're going to be uh, learning today. Uh, the first thing before we start to take you through the sessions is I want to explain to you something Mastering the diminished sound is going to give you that it factor in your playing. There's there's a lot of people who use sounds that just kind of make people just kind of scrunch up their face. A lot of time that will be the diminished sound. And diminished sound has uh, several characteristics that we're going to go over in a second. But why do we like the diminished sound so much? Well, it probably is because it's cool, right? A lot of the cool movements we've heard in gospel somehow usually incorporate this sound. And um, so learning everything you need to know about diminished sound means that you can easily use these moves when you play. Uh, and I, and I want to add this too. Dominus chord is a transitional chord, right? It's, it's, it's a transitional chord. So it's usually the foundation of a lot of your passing movements and things like that. It's a sound of instability, right? It's not a restful sound. Uh, it's a sound of movement and it's a sound of unrest. And this is the really the main thing that we need to know when we're discussing the diminished sound. At the beginner level, uh, the, the, the most important thing to learn is how to form the diminished triad. And of course, we're going to go through an entire thing of how to, how to form it and when to use it. Once you get past that at the competent level, uh, you're going to, I'm going to have to go into what's called diminished seventh chords. And we'll show you how to use those and of course, after that, we're going to go to some intermediate chords. And what we're, most musicians um, really don't play closed voice, uh, diminished chords. So what we're going to need to do is make sure that we're opening those voices up, making them sound really good. At the advanced level, you know, you're going to be using the actual diminished scale as a melodic tool, right? and a harmonic tool to form some crazy combinations. We're gonna show you tips from uh, Eddie Brown, how he uses it. We're gonna show you Glenn's, and then we're gonna give you some ideas that I tell you where you can use it with minor six chords. So this is a whole lot today. And again, even if you know uh, everything you think you know about this subject, um, anything about this is that I'm starting from the beginning just to make sure that everybody's on the same page uh, that we can grow together. So it's going to start off pretty easy, but don't uh, don't worry. We're going to get advanced. And if again, if you have a question, go ahead and ask that question in the chat. At the end of each section, I'm going to stop, look and see whatever questions we have before we move on to the next section. Let's start at the beginner section. What I want everybody to do is go ahead and play a C major triad on the piano. Good. Now, to deform the diminished chord, all we're going to do is you want to take the third note and you want to drop it a half step you want to take the fifth note and you want to drop that a half step. Good, so this is a C diminished. Good, now let's play an F triad. Good, now make that diminished. Drop that A to an A flat. Drop the C to a B. Let's play the chord. Very good, let's play one more. We're gonna play a, a D diminished chord. That's right, that means we're gonna play a D triad. Good. All right, good, good, good. Now let's play the diminished. And that uh, you do that by doing uh, drop that F sharp to an F, drop the A flat to an A, uh, A to an A flat. Good. Now, that's how to do it. Now, when we're looking at the diatonic diminished triad, uh, when we're looking at the uh, the diatonic triads, and I taught you when I first taught you how to play this, um, and of course this is on the site, and I taught you this by going up the scale like this. Right now, I always tell people if you don't know how to play the triads in a certain key, you don't know that key. Right. In order to play in a certain key, you always have to be able to play the triads in that key. In fact, let's do that now. Let's play C triads together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, C, D, F, G, A, B. See, and notice that the last chord, the seventh chord is diminished, right? Now let's play E flat. I wanna show you, I wanna show you something here because this is gonna show you when to use the diminished chord and its use, and this is really important. I'm gonna do E flat triad. Now, if you can do it, go ahead. If not, it's okay, you can watch, but watch this. Now, let me let me change the key to uh, E flat so it has my right settings on here. Okay, so here we go. One, two, ready, go. four chord, five chord, six chord. Oh, there's my diminished. 
now what do you notice about these diminished chords if you notice the diminished chord uh, every time i play the diminished chord if you notice something it is occurring right before the last chord right before the target chord and look at this it is a half step below so whether i do c or whether i did e flat or f it's always a half step below this leads me to a very very important rule okay it tells me when to use a diminished chord. When am I gonna use a diminished chord? I'm gonna use a diminished chord right before I play a major or a minor chord, okay? So this is this is what we learned in the beginner section. See, in the beginner, some of y'all knew, some of y'all knew to play, y'all knew the diminished chords, but you don't really know when it's used. So this is, and, and, and again, this is not a, a hard rule, but this is how, I have seen it, remember, because everything I do is based on my transcriptions, all right? So this is what I'm noticing in gospel, that uh, they go a half step up or a half step down. Now, those are that section was for beginners. Uh, this next section will be for those who are in the competence stage. Uh, diminished triads are great, uh, but you need to learn seventh chords. And not only do you need to learn seventh chords, but you need to learn the various combinations. Uh, the diminished chord is a symmetrical chord. Um, and, and, and Jada, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you don't, if you don't like uh, this, then let me know. But Jada, what do I mean by symmetrical? <laughs> it means, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It means that you, uh, the same distance is from, or each, each interval is the same distance from um, each next interval. So if, if the, you said B diminished was the last yeah. one we did, or you, yeah. that was your example, B to D is the same distance from D to F. And then even gotcha. if you put the seventh in it, F to A flat is the gotcha. same distance as well. All right, so listen to this, everybody. If you have trouble finding the diminished chord, you always can find it by pressing three half steps up. So basically you would pick a key. Uh, so you could pick any key and you're just gonna go three, three, three. So basically let's, uh, let me just pick any key here and, and go to um, G, that would be one, two, three, good. One, two, three, good. One, two, three, good, All right? It's gonna be like that. Now, what you have to get good at if you're in a competent section is playing diminished seventh chords, not just diminished, but diminished sevenths. So I'm gonna do one of them, I'm gonna start taking questions, another one. At the competent stage, you must memorize all your diminished chords. So what this means is if, if you can't be thinking about what a diminished chord is, like if you're about to play, if you're on a moment, right? If you're on stage, if you're playing a song, you can't be thinking, oh no, what's my G diminished? You see what I'm saying? You gotta have those memorized. So that's why as soon as I say A, boom. As soon as I say C, boom. As soon as I say F sharp, boom. Like right there, right there, right there. So that sometimes you may have to add that to your practice session. Uh, so Keith, I see your hand. Um, Keith, is this you? Uh, Keith, unmute yourself for me. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, add your spotlight there. All right. So Keith, uh, I'm ready for you now. And... Um, I got a good one. I say, so Keith, can you play A flat? Uh, everybody as well as Keith, play an A flat diminished seven chord in root position. A flats diminished seven. No, that last chord was wrong. Try it again. The last note. Oh, shoot, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's my ear. I was thinking of this. I, I got to yeah. look if my ear can't pick it up, man, I'm, then I'm not a good, then, then everybody has to quit because they're like, we really, Sean's supposed to be helping us with our ear. All right. So, um, okay, that's good. Now, give me all the inversions. So, Keith, play that chord, but now put the A flat on top, play the next chord, then put the next one on top. I want you to play all those inversions for me. Oops. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Now, I want to tell you this. If For those of you who are watching on the replay and you are wondering, uh, how, how do I practice uh, all of my diminished? Here's the suggestion that I would use. I would start with... Let's go to intermediate. <laughs> Let's go to intermediate, folks. All right. Most musicians, uh, don't play closed voice diminished chords. You need to know what to do. Right now, we've been dealing with closed voice diminished chords. So in this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. <laughs> we're going to get some. We're going to get good now, folks. 
uh, we're going to show you the preferred way of playing diminished seven chords in the left hand. And if your hands aren't big enough, you're going to have to have a way to play this. And we're also going to show you the, uh, the core pairings that form flat nines. Because every diminished chord is also a flat nine. Listen to me. Every diminished chord is also a dominant chord with great tension. Okay? Every diminished chord is a dominant chord with lots of tension. All right. So you need to know, this is important. You need to know what bass note to play with each type of diminished chord. All right? <laughs> So check this out. You should be able to play an A7 diminished chord uh, in the right hand with all inversions. Uh, you should be able to know what bass note to put with an A7 diminished chord that would form a flat nine. The answer would be, actually it would be an F. It would be an F, an A flat, a B and an E flat and a D. You should be able to play another note in the bass while keeping the same chord in the right hand. Uh, so I may, do, I may do this another day because I'm not going to be able to get through all these questions here. Let's go to advance. The, the goal is to use the diminished scale as a melodic and harmonic device to form crazy combinations. Okay. So at this level, so far, we've been just kind of talking more theory. Okay, here's why you should use a chord. Here's what it is, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, at the advanced level, what's happening is you are using what's called a diminished sound. You, you're moving away from the idea of it being a chord and you're moving towards the idea of it being a sound. What is the diminished sound? Well, I categorize it by using the diminished scale. So we're gonna build a diminished scale starting from any note. We're gonna build it together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, let's do, uh, we're gonna start it from A, okay? And this is gonna be, here's how you're gonna create the diminished scale. Um, what we're going to do, cause this has to be memorized because in music, knowing the theory doesn't gonna count for anything. You have to know this stuff. And so what I wanna do is I want to make sure everybody can know how to form this. And it's really simple. Uh, we had a diminished scale challenge that a lot of you guys were a part of um, that I'm hoping that some of you may know this already, but here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to form it. Has, you know what, no, I'm gonna let y'all do it. <laughs> You are beyond me. I'm learning this part. I understand well, the well, chord, but you're teaching me right now. I got to get Edward. I, I see <laughs> Edward killing over there. Edward Sanders, you ready, man? You can unmute. You want to unmute it? And let me see. Let me hear this diminished chord. I don't, you, don't, you can go slow. I'm calling on people now like it's a classroom. I, 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 if, if your video is off, I won't call you. But uh... <laughs> All right. Can you hear my keyboard? Yeah, man. I can hear it. Oh, turn it. Turn it up just a little bit, though. Yeah. Half, uh huh, whole, uh huh, half, uh huh, whole, half, whole, and then A. Now let's play that again. What I want everyone to do is try to, you know, with music, we just got to do this over and over and over until it comes natural. Because let me tell you guys something all the melodic devices are going to come from the scale. So let's try to get uh, Edward tried. Uh, Edward tried again, and then I'm gonna call on. Uh, see who else wants to do it. Uh, okay. 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 Perfect. Perfect. That's it. Good. I'm, I'm gonna mute him. I'm gonna go to the next person. I'm, I'm gonna do this for. I'm gonna do this for a lot of people. I need. I need people to. I need people to. Hiram, you ready? Is Hiram? Is Ephraim? Are you ready? All right, Ephraim, you're up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, all right, Ephraim, let's go. Yeah. All right, play an A. Good, Brian Bailey, you ready? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right, hold on. All right, so yeah, you guys got uh, administrators. Make sure everybody's muted because um, we want to make sure that we can get these. All right, this is going to be really cool, guys. I want you to listen to me. Let me make sure I'm spotlighted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in fact, I'm, I'm going to actually take this off because I want you guys to understand something. All right. The scale that you just played, that you just memorized, can be used with eight different chords. Eight. Okay. 
So it 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 can be used for a whole lot of stuff. Eight different chords. All right. Now here's what I'm about to put somebody in the spot. So check this out. I want somebody who who's already played because I don't want I don't want you to. I want to spotlight somebody, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to play the scale again. And this time, I'm gonna ask you to do some other stuff. You there, man? You're looking good. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let me uh, give me give me a little bit more volume. You got a nice screensaver, man. You came you came ready to learn today. <laughs> yeah, this, this is my setup when I'm teaching. Can you I, hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay. Let's play that same scale. But I'm gonna have you. For, first of all, I'm gonna have you do. And as I'm talking to as I'm talking to him, remember, I'm only using him as an example. I'm really talking to everybody. Right. So the way I'm questioning him, the way I'm questioning everybody is how I'm questioning you guys. I want everybody to listen to what I'm saying. So we know what the scale is, but the starting point of the scale is the issue here, because I had everyone start from A. But the, the issue is that we need to be able to recognize the scale regardless of the note we're starting on. So what I'm going to be doing with QKV is I'm going to ask you to start from different points. Okay. Right. You already played the scale, but now we're going to have you start maybe from a different note and, and you're just going to continue that scale on from there. Uh, okay. The note, first one we're going to do is let's start from the G sharp. So instead of starting from the A, let's have them start from a half step below. Let's see if you can get it. And am I still ending on A? You're still ending on A. Yeah. OK. All right. Good. Now let's do even each note even. Ba, 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 ba. I, was trying, I was trying to figure out the finger for it. Good, perfect. Now, let's start from an F sharp. Let's start from a B. Let's start from a D and go up uh, to the A an octave higher. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now, in the left hand, play a, a, a spread triad, an A spread triad, which is an A F sharp C. And I want you to start from the D. <laughs> now, here we can. Now we're coming up with the real cool stuff, right? So right. now you're going to do this scale with the spread triad in the left hand. I want you to do that scale on the right, starting on a D, okay. and go up to the A above that A. <laughs> so. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. You see how that sounds? No, but I want you to take that up. I want you to take that up all the way to that other A, though. So okay. you give me the octave and a half. Sorry. Ah, now let's do another one. Let's, let's go to the uh, E flat spread triad. It's gonna be an E flat C and an F sharp. And I want you to start from at the G sharp in the, the right hand and give me three octaves of that same scale. <laughs> Man, this is dope. Okay. Ah, oh, that sounds so nice. And now, now, and and what would we use this to approach that particular? Yes. Uh huh. Go to uh, an E, e minor. <laughs> there you go. So now what I want you to do is use the same scale, and okay. and then hit the E minor chord because I want to know where this is going because otherwise none of this makes sense if I don't know where to use it. Right. All right so try it again. There you go because I really want to make sure that you ended on that B. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. Into the new chord, y'all. You see that? You see how we're doing this? Okay. All right, y'all give y'all better give him some big props because I've been putting him on the spot, man. I've, I've been, I've been. Uh... <laughs> All right, this thing is still recording, man. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. All right, so. Hands in. Toe, toe. He's thinking. He's thinking. Now he wants to do something different. Watch this. Now watch this. Wait, wait, wait. What was that scale? What do you think that scale was? See? He, <laughs> I'm did, not the same. The, he did that scale on the G? That's right. And look at the look at the voicing. <laughs> look at the voicing of the hands. Y'all see? Y'all, what, what are you seeing in his left hand? What do y'all see? <laughs> now check this out. Check this out. Let me show you guys. Like, look. They ain't gonna, Jada, they're not going to get this nowhere, man. Tell them. Listen. Listen, listen, G, look at this, look at this chart. G, E, B flat. Scale. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? I, I, 
go back to the go back. You G E B flat. He in the middle of a run. Come on, y'all. <laughs> okay. Spread diminished. Spread diminished triad with the run. Y'all see what I'm saying? This is this is incredible, man. Incredible. To know where things are going, to know why they're doing it, to know why it works. This is why we're here. Like now, let me just play this before we go, because I'm I'm gonna uh, uh, I wanna uh, let's go, let's put it some different places here. So. Bless the Lord. I have a diminished here. That's spread diminished in the left hand. Oh my soul. I could do it again. And oh, see, that was another one with the A flat. And oh, I'm just using a bunch of places. That is within me. There it is, right there, right. I, uh, the A, A diminished. I can use the A diminished scale. And then, and then let's try it again. This piano sounds nice. the Lord. 